Hello everyone and welcome to a new IK video. This is Ken and so far we talked about two marches when it comes to uh, categorizing the immortals in a tier list. We made a tier list for the earth immortals and we made another for the water immortals. So in this video we're gonna talk about the fire immortals. Fire is honestly my favorite march. Not the strongest but it is my favorite march. And it's gonna be exciting to categorize all the fire immortals. So far, the epic immortals that we have, we still don't have this guy. It's coming soon. It's coming soon since forever. But we're gonna categorize or add the immortals in the tier list. So let's just begin. And I already prepared the tier list. So let's see what do we have here. Before we start, I just wanna put this guy here. Because seriously, I don't wanna talk about him, which is Ashuk. Uh, all right, so we're gonna start with... Frederick. Frederick is a fire immortal, attack immortal, spearman leader, deals damage. If you have his exclusive artifact, he heals a bit of the damage dealt. So not the, not, nothing impressive really about him. It just deals some damage, not a lot of damage. And he attack immortals in the front line direct ahead. So he's going to be in the D tier. Uh, seriously, one of the immortals that I haven't seen anyone using him or haven't seen anyone doing something exceptional with frederick so i'm gonna put him here i really don't don't like frederick at all so this is where he goes all right we have trajan trajan is definitely one of my favorite fire immortals he's so powerful he gives a lot of buffs and above all he's a defense immortal which means he can tank some damage he places all ally units with flame empowerment increasing their critical damage by 30% and we all know fire march is all about critical damage so increasing this by 30% is a huge buff when a fire immortal deals damage with ultimate skill the immortal's critical chance will be increased by 10% that that just means that trajan can only be used in a fire march or at least with chaos immortals if he is being used with chaos immortals that means that they will receive this buff as well all right, so critical chance will be increased by 10% for 6 seconds, stackable up to 5 times. That means that if you're using Trajan along with an immortal such as Sign Duke or Hippolyta, that means that they will get up to 50% damage since they use multiple damages through their ultimate skills. And if you have his exclusive artifact upon the cost, they get 10%. A critical rate that means that they can get up to 60% crit rate and 30% crit damage so he's definitely an OP immortal to use in the fire march he goes to the S tier without a question one of my favorite immortals in the fire march all right so we have Hippolyta I already talked plenty about Hippolyta I recently made a video on uh, must have immortals when it comes to BVE people versus environment so Hippolyta is a must-have immortal, doesn't matter which march you're running, she's just so important, so she's definitely going to the S tier. Not only she's good in fire marches when it comes to BVB, but she's so powerful when it comes to defeating gnomes bosses or being used in the rift breaker or against the spider. And I already talked about her skill and her exclusive artifact. Okay, so we have Sign Duke next. Sign Duke is also a very powerful uh, damage dealer when it comes to having enough crit rate. So she must be used with an immortal such as Trajan and I believe an immortal such as Hippolyta as well just to make sure that her skill keeps triggering through the crit rates, the critical hits that being applied by Hippolyta. We all know Hippolyta applies seven damages just simply by casting her ultimate skill and she has insane amount of energy regain that means that she's able to help sign you triggering her ultimate skill so sign you goes to not sure if it's s tier or a tier i'm gonna add her to the s tier just simply because of how much damage she deals to either in bvb or in bve against bosses as well but that only applies if you if you are using the right skill on sign you for example, part of this right skill is a skill we don't have access to through the fresh shop yet, which is corrosive power. Corrosive power is so important for Sign Duke. It's impressive. It's it's actually insane how much damage she can deal 
using this skill there is also another skill that is so important for sign duke which is unyielding unyielding if the immortal have less than 70 percent troops that means their crit rate will increase by 50 percent at level 8 and they recover part of the damage of the physical damage dealt to the enemy team so having these two skills is so important for sign duke so i'm gonna add here to the s tier because she deserves it and and it just fix this and she just deals so much damage if she had the right skills all right next is william william isn't really that powerful or that impressive because he got a very low energy regain unlike all the fire all the fire the other fire immortals for example you can see here hippolyta got 124 energy regain even without a surge artifact we have cyrus with a surge artifact at four stars got 122 energy regain and of course sign uh empress who is 124 energy regain as well trajan got a decent amount of energy regain as well at 124 so if we look at william william got the lowest energy regain among all the fire immortals however his skill is still good he increases the crit rate by 20 percent and if you have his exclusive artifact they the, he increases the critical attack by 35 percent so i'm gonna add him to the b tier just because his energy regain is very low and he's an attack immortal that doesn't really deal that much damage if he was a defense immortal he might have been in the a tier but he's an attack immortal and he doesn't deal that much damage very low energy regain his buff is cool though so i'm gonna, gonna add him in the b tier we have Empress Wu. Empress Wu is definitely my favorite immortal in the entire march. Because she she's a mage that deals insane amount of damage. And she got insane energy regain as we just mentioned right now. But the thing is on Sign Duke, uh, I mean in um, Empress Wu, when it comes to Empress Wu, she doesn't deal damage simply by using her ultimate skill. Her ultimate skill applies to one random enemy unit and has a 60% chance of causing equal damage to another nearby random unit up to three times. That means that she has a chance of dealing triple the damage to the initial target, which is around 1800% damage ratio. That is, of course, beside the, the initial damage, which is six, 600%. If you have his, her exclusive artifact, the chance the 60 percent chance increases to 70 percent <clears throat> but that's all about it her exclusive artifact doesn't really do that much difference however i will take the 10 percent chance to trigger the the ultimate skill however the most of the damages for signed you comes from the skills the DP, dbs skills that we are using on signed you i mean empress i'm not sure why i keep saying signed you but anyway so I'm using Spell Disintegrator and I'm using Annihilation and I'm using Chase. All these three skills together help broken Chase most of the fight. And the main damage usually comes from the ultimate skill, then Annihilation, then Chase, and then in the last Spell Disintegrator. However, all these three skills used to trigger Chase and she usually, if you're up against an, a Marsh that doesn't have uh, enough resilience ratio, and doesn't have uh let's see uh, a skill such as malice this will be the scenario that is applied you can see here it is a 100 percent however this was half a march i really want to take a look at a decent report but unfortunately i don't remember i have any uh, maybe this one <clears throat> dragula is using a decent fire march but he's using Hippolyta as well as an insane damager. And we can see here Chase was the main damage from Empress Wu. But anyway, so it is actually kind of hard to rank Empress Wu. So I'm going to put her in the A tier. Just because Sign Duke has the potential to deal more damage compared to Empress Wu. Empress Wu needs a perfect artifact in order to be used correctly and the artifact should be crit rate and the sub stats or the special stats should be annihilation so this this will be for uh, empress Wu. 
As for Cyrus, Cyrus is actually a very powerful immortal when it comes to applying control. And he is also a support immortal, which means that we can use a skill such as no escape on him. As we can see, we have Dragiola, one of the most powerful fire marches in our server, if not the strongest. He's using no escape on Cyrus along with his uh, ultimate skill that applies a lot of control. If we have a decent fight for him, let's see here. There we go. If we take a look at the control applied from Cyrus, we can see it is 24 seconds from no escape, 9 seconds from static armor. And here, this should be a decent fight. 15 seconds from static armor, 6 seconds from no escape. However, he's not using the exclusive artifact for Cyrus. He's using a Zeno artifact and I'm using the exclusive artifact. The only difference here is that I'm not using no escape on my fire mark. I'm using it on my earth mark here. This is why my fire did not stand a chance against his. But usually I'm running... Uh, usually... In the normal build, I'm running no escape on, on Cyrus, and it helps a lot dealing enough control, but it doesn't work ever since uh, the Chaos Immortal Fufei came out. So I'm gonna place Cyrus in the B tier. He's very useful to protect Empress Wu if you are gonna use assist on him, and he applies a lot of control. Even if you're using Cyrus along with an Immortal such as Sign Duke, he will also be very useful. He reduces the resilience rate of the enemy team, which means more crit. And he applies a lot of control using his ultimate skill as well. So I believe this will be all for the Fire March tier list. Trajan, Hippolyta, Find Duke in the S tier, Empress Wu in the A tier, Cyrus William in the B tier. Frederick and Ashuka in the do not use tier, really useless immortals, do not even think about using them. The only scenario that you can use Ashuka in is running a free to play, completely free to play fire march and using assist on him to, in, order, in order to protect an immortal such as Empress Wu. This is the only scenario that I can imagine someone is using Ashuka. So this will be all for this one. And uh, next we'll be talking about either the lightning or the wind, but I think lightning comes first. I will keep wind and shadow for last and of course we will talk about holy and the chaos immortals and the elements we'll talk uh, about a bunch of different tier lists in the future however this will be all for this one thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day